Brilliant stuff. Now, video footage of a police officer apparently kicking and stamping on a man's head at Manchester Airport has triggered widespread condemnation and several protests. However, new footage appeared over the weekend which show the events leading up to the moment and may cast a different light on it. The incident happened in a car park payment area at Manchester Airport about 8.30 last Tuesday in the evening. Videos taken by members of the public appeared to show a man lying on the ground being kicked and stamped on by a police officer. As a result of the outcry, one officer was suspended and the Independent Office for Police Conduct is investigating. But now there's more footage and this shows the initial moments. The police approach the group of men and it, it gets very, very violent. They try to arrest one. He fights back. His friend or brother or cousin or whatever intervenes. It all kicks off. You see the moment the female officer has her nose broken. You then see some serious punches going in on the police. And then finally, the, the worst guy who's wearing the blue top is tasered, collapses on the floor, and that's when the kick and the stamp to the head happen. So that's, that's the situation. The family of the man who was kicked has expressed concern for any injured officers. The solicitor who was representing the four men who were arrested and bailed has now stepped aside because he's taken a lot of criticism for his remarks. So I wonder if you've seen both videos and, and you say, well, hang on, we can't condemn the kick and the stamp without seeing the first one fundamentally, or do you say no? It makes no difference whatsoever. Let's talk to Chris Phillips, former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office, and Kate Smirthwaite, comedian, writer, political activist. Kate, you think that no matter what the first, the initial video shows, the kick and the stamp are unacceptable? Well, in the video where the, the guy is being kicked and stamped on, he is lying on the floor, face down. He's clearly incapacitated. At that stage, he is clearly not a threat to anyone. The job of the police, and it, it, it should be so obvious that I don't need to say it, is to de-escalate the situation. The job of the police is not to go, well, you deserve a smack in the face, so I'm going to administer it. It should be to arrest the person. And as soon as he's on the floor, he can eminently be arrested. At that point, you know, he can be taken to court and you can charge him with the other crimes that you are saying. And I mean, at that point as well, it's interesting we talk about the context. At that point, he can also explain the context of what he is doing like you know if there is further background to it we don't know anything about what else has happened to him I mean there's also the broader context that people of color are often very afraid of the police because they've had innumerable bad experiences and indeed I mean I speak as a white person who's also had pretty large numbers of bad experiences with the police it, it is illegal to resist arrest but at the same time you can understand why there are people who do it so you know, the point of all of that context, that can be brought to court. But when somebody is lying face down on the floor, unarmed, there is no need to kick or stamp on that person. And it should be within the police's training to know that their job is to de escalate okay, and Chris, never Chris to Phillips, lash what, what, out. What do you make of that, Chris Phillips? Well, that was a complete load of nonsense, to be quite honest. The, 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 the simple fact is people who've never dealt with violent people rush into judgment with a having seen an edited video, Sorry, which is only showing one little side violent. of the incident. Oh, fascinating. So are you telling a rape that, victim that I've never dealt with violence? Chris, you may seriously stick that. Can, can I just say, you probably well, haven't sorry, dealt with a, a fight of that nature. Well, sorry, you literally told me Kate, Kate, that I've never dealt with Let violence. him get to the end so of his second sentence. I'm just going to put it straight out there, Chris. I absolutely have, like almost every woman in this country, and received no support from the police, no backup, no help when there was a real crime that really needed support there. Right. Do not tell me I've never dealt with violence. That is a disgusting thing to say. OK, well... Thank you. All right. Chris, you Thank want to you. pick that up? Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, well, uh, that officer had just been punched at least ten times, possibly five times in the face, as I've seen it. It was one uh, incident that he was having to deal with. Listen, that officer went to work that day to keep people safe, probably from terrorism. He's punched at least ten times. Um, he doesn't know. He's got two very violent people to deal with. Uh, and uh, he's had to deal with it. And, um, and if I was him, I would be thinking that, uh, you know, his, his lady officers had been punched in the face, uh, were probably out of the game, and he had to deal with the two violent people. So, uh, listen, violence and 
is is awful when you look at it and you see it and you see an edited version of it it's terrible but but there was a long story to this and and the disappointing piece for me jeremy is that we haven't the, the police aren't allowed to release the body cam footage mm -hmm. and the other footage which show the incident right up until that point okay and to, to be clear when you were talking about kate's experience of violence you're talking about kate policing violence are you in a uniform rather than her own personal experience yeah, I, I mean, dealing with very violent people who are trying to punch the lights out. Um, you know, the officer yeah, also had a gun. Yeah, I, we, need uh, to, yeah. we need to bear that in mind. Okay. The officer had a gun. All right. That could have been taken off him, all sorts of things. Okay, but so, Kate, back to you. Yeah, I mean, this, I think, is the problem, is that it is quite obvious from anyone looking at that clip that this person is is not a threat. And indeed, if they think that there are two people who are, th are a threat, then they need to turn around and look for the other person. This is what the police should be trained in, in de-escalating the situation. And I, the argument I'm hearing is, oh, well, that, you know, what if they tried to take the police's guns? Well, absolutely, there's a good argument for de-arming the police. The police are the only service we have out there who have to wear body cameras because so many times they have crossed the line over and over again. This is not the first time this has happened. You know, I live in North London. I'm, I'm, I'm within a couple of miles now of where Mark Duggan um, grew up. I am absolutely around the place where innumerable incidents have happened over and over again. We need to stop and think about how we police these situations. The police are not there to respond to violence with further violence. They're there to de-escalate. That's why we have a court system and a police system. Otherwise, we might as well not bother. We might as well have the next person at the airport turn around and go, but, you seem yeah, like a wrong and I'll slug you Yeah, one. but Chris, Chris makes the point, the point that... The point of a police. Yeah, but Chris makes the point that the, the police officer who kicked the person in the head may have been hit half a dozen times in his own head. First, he may have been disorientated. Yeah, firstly, there are loads of officers there. And secondly, I've been disorientated in my life and I've never stamped on a man's head, Jeremy, and I don't think you have. I, that, no. If that is your response to being disorientated, you shouldn't be in the police. That should be what the training does, teaching you how to remain calm and professional in that situation. Mm. And what that man is doing is not calm and it's not professional, it's the behaviour of a thug. And Do you know, Jeremy, it's no wonder... With thugs. It's, yep. Jeremy, it's no wonder police officers in this country are resigning en masse because you've got Good. people with that kind of attitude. Good. You don't want to be policed. This no, is the key point here. You don't want to be policed. Police you don't like the police. You don't want them worse. to, to police It's you. not that. I want there to be a successful and professional police service. I want to report crime and it get dealt with, but it never does. It never does. I get no support. And what do I see? Who does get arrested? A few non-violent protesters and then I see them out on the streets bothering people of colour day in and day out. I don't see them making my life better. Right, I Chris, want go a back, service let, let Chris that keeps come me back safe. On that. that is not what the police do I've right Because I've seen not Kate... Chris, but I've seen people saying that the police are committing more crimes than they're solving, which seems oh, like... Oh, I've uh, said that, Jeremy. Oh, you you have said it yourself. I, okay. I have said it myself. Well, that sounds well, about Jeremy. right coming and, from and this lady, that's for sure. Right, well, I, I, that can't be statistically true. Like, you can't surely <laughs> have the police... statistically it must Listen, be. Listen, it's complete nonsense. And, and the trouble is, you know, people like this coming on to the... Uh, you know, she's got clear issues with policing. This, what what yeah. we're supposed to be talking Based about on is facts. one incident... Uh, and a serious it's incident, not that, one incident that police Chris. officers on, Kate, had wait, to do, deal with. Do you say his thing. That, that police officers had to deal with an extremely violent situation. Now, luckily, most people in the world don't have to deal with that kind of scenario. That officer had just been punched continuously. He was dealing with two violent people. You know, th it were two women that had been knocked over. One had had a nose broken, and the officers were having to deal with that. And and you know. If we want our police officers to keep us safe, we've got to understand that they sometimes have to use violence against people who are who are very violent towards them. Mm, yeah, but Chris, you know, the, but by the time the violence was used, this guy had been tasered, was uh, completely and utterly helpless on the floor. So I don't well, think that, he that, can be yeah, in that but Jeremy, category. if you if you're if you're looking upon that as being you know ten seconds, twenty seconds between that incident, I would say that would be completely outrageous. He was having to deal with two very violent people. One of which, you know, we don't know what uh, what was going through that officer's mind because we haven't asked him yet. What we need to do is get the full evidence out there before people make judgments. Thank you very much indeed. That was Chris Phillips, former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office, and Kate Smirthwaite, comedian, writer and political activist. Having seen the, the second film, which is actually the initial moments of the conflagration at Manchester Airport, I wonder what you think. You've seen the second film, it shows the build-up. May make no difference at all to you, I don't know. Here's Tears for Fears, then we'll talk about it.